I have a lot of people say that they think it's Orlando's best kept secret. We, we go by the four R's, rescue, raise, rehabilitate, and release. Mm -hmm. But our main focus absolutely is wildlife rehabilitation, yeah, right. And it's, it's basically, you know, injured and orphaned native species wildlife and to raise them up or rehabilitate them with the purposes of putting them back into the wild where they're supposed to be. He was only probably three inches long yeah. when we came and when you raise them, they're, it's a little bit different than the squirrels or something because they're such social animals. If they feel abandoned or any you kind of depressed, there. they'll just stop eating and die. It's not like, well, when they get hungry, they'll eat. So you, when they're small, you have to give them the affection and love and playfulness. Like mom would. Like mom would and be with the brothers and sisters. And then when they're old enough, then you start pulling back. But unfortunately, sometimes there are some that their impairments are as such that they can't go back into the wild. And some of those are the ones that have the opportunity to stay if we have room, if they can live a quality life in captivity, if we have the proper permits. And sometimes they can stay as educational ambassadors. Mm -hmm. And uh, because we are open to the public, it allows them the opportunity to come through, see the animals, learn a little bit about them. But we hope that through the animals being here, that we can educate people and discourage them from making the same mistakes so that more animals yeah. don't have to live in a cage. We live in a society, unfortunately, that you know you can get anything on the black market. It doesn't matter whether it's legal or not. And then when you know they're on the verge of getting caught, is usually when they or just they when they get rid of it, they can't handle it anymore. Uh, but it's a really big problem, especially in Florida. There's a ton of exotics that are here that people get, and they let them go. But a lot of times, people. You know, they get things like monkeys and stuff like yeah. that, and they, they portray them on television sometimes as being able to wear a diaper and clothes and things like that. So automatically, the general public, their perception inside the box yeah. is that, you know, you could do that. And, you know, a lot of times people think that, that if they don't have the time to come and volunteer to help clean the cages and do that sort of stuff, that, that we don't need them or that it's not beneficial. Even to us or any other nonprofit organization, even if you can't physically go and help them, there is always something that people can do to help those organizations, whether it's just help get the word out about them, which is huge. And for nonprofits right now, that is crucial, you know, for us to be able to stay afloat. You know, it's been a journey. So, you know, but it is a sacrifice. It's something that you have to give a lot of yourself in order to be able to do this. and. Some people can only sacrifice, you know, a few hours a week, which is great. My life just happened to be in the position that, you know, I just chose to give more of myself and I just made this work around my life.